Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Who did you see last night? My old friend Steve. Now, there have been two or three movies made about Steve. The, the movies are always made after you're dead. Because uh, he would have stopped that movie being made if he was alive. But there's another movie coming out. Now, I'm sure it's delayed because of the coronavirus. That tells the 100% truth about him. Those are only 50-50 kind of truth. But he was a miserable son of a bitch. Classic. Now, the irony of this is that uh, Wozniak, his partner in crime, is now the mentee of one of my mentees, the Woz. And so we, um, when you get the slides, you're going to see some uh, uh, personal type correspondence to the best of our knowledge has not been published on the net yet uh, and to show just what a prick he really was. Uh, but uh, he is a classic example, as with many of the guys, I'm on board, pull up the gangplank. That means, you know, he's on the ship and he didn't care. And as he eliminated some of the shareholders towards the end when he went public, if you remember, I believe in the movie he was walking by and he, well, I know he took, uh, there was supposed to be 18 or 19 or 20 of his employees that were supposed to share in the IPO. Only two shared. Wozniak and Jobs. Those were handshake deals. Suffice it to say, a handshake deal is not what it used to be. Uh, and, the, uh, and of course, then when he uh, didn't acknowledge his daughter until he saw that she seemed bright, uh, and he allowed his wife and his daughter to live on uh, relief or whatever you call it. Um, and he's not dissimilar to any of the guys. He's, he's just not. And I, I'm not telling you, I've been told uh, about 35 years ago by uh, a, one of the luminaries who's still around, multi-billionaire, um, if you were tougher, Dan, you would have been the first trillionaire on the planet. Now, if they're telling me if I was tougher, how in God's name would they rate you? If you were tougher, Dan, you would have been the first trillionaire on the planet. Because I'm not s savage enough vis-a-vis -vis their benchmarks. Because they're all tough. Okay, your takeaways from the Jobs movie. Yes, sir. He was very demanding and he forced people to think outside the box. Most people do. Or I said, when I say most people, I'm talking about most high performance people. I'm not, uh, you know. Uh, I didn't know growing up that I would just, I, mean, I was a high performance person. I wasn't. I had the, uh, the alpha male background from my father, but I, because I lived uh, in the barrio as a young man, I didn't know, I didn't know, and this is the true story, I didn't know how many zeros was in a million. I had never heard the word million until I was a young second lieutenant army officer in the officers club overseas, and um, I walked in and they were all drinking. Uh, well, they drank a lot anyway, but they were drinking and they looked like free drinks at the bar, you know? And I asked another guy, a buddy of mine who was a captain, and I said, uh, John, what are they doing? He says, Harry just inherited $1,400,000. He was another young officer. And I said, could you write that down? And he wrote it down on a napkin. One comma four. That's the first time I ever saw what a million was. I was 22 years old. I never heard a million, the word million, pass anybody's lips in the hood. Never. Now the hood gangsters, they talk about millions and you know, but not then. And so uh, we drank up, and uh, the, um, in about during that same time frame, I was at the, uh, I won an award, uh, which is, is pretty funny. It was about uh, an IBM award. I came up with an idea to save the Army about $3 million over 10 years. I don't really remember how I did it, but I came up with some idea, because I didn't know anything about computers in those days. And uh, I was getting an award. 
I was getting an award, and the two-star general, Woodrow Vaughn, was standing at the bar, and he says, Danny, um, you should buy the drinks. And I says, why, uh, general? Because, well, I didn't say why. I bought the drinks. Then I asked him why, because you don't ask a general why when he tells you to do something. And he said, because you got that award. And I said, I got a $50 war bond. If I kept it 25 years, it was worth $50. But right now, it was worth $6.75. I saved the government $3 million bucks. They gave me $6.75. And he said, you know, you ought to consider civilian life because a guy like you could make a fortune in the civilian life. And a light bulb went off over my head. I remember the moment, I still get chills talking about it. Wealth, civilian. Because I had just signed up to be a regular army officer. I was going to be a career officer. And I was out of the army in six months. And... The million dollar, million four hundred thousand dollars, the two star general who ultimately became a three star general saying that you could get wealthy in the civilian life and the rest is history. I came out and that was the first high performance thing I ever did was become an officer. Uh, and uh, so since I'm about 20, uh, I've been a high performance person and I've, you know, and nothing has changed. Steve Jobs who, depending on what story you want to believe, he dropped out of school after three hours, three days, three weeks, but he dropped out. He's adopted. His birth parents tried to hook up with him after he became famous. And I'm happy to say he told his birth parents to fuck off. Uh, and he stayed with his adopted parents, the Jobs. The Jobs. Uh, what else about uh, Mr. Jobs? Yes, sir. Gee, just like you, huh? A real tough ass, huh? Sally calls me rhino skin. When I came here in 1981 to begin with in, uh, to the UK, I told people, I'm an American. You can call me anything, just give me the fucking money. Now, for those of you that are from the UK, can you? This is 1981. I'm an American. You can call me anything. Just give me the fucking money. Just like that. You can piss on me. Just give me the fucking money. And I've been like that ever since. Whereas, you, you've left meetings. Well, what, that guy was kind of rude, wasn't he? Or that, right? Or that guy was aggressive. Or that, there wasn't a meeting that I attended that I wasn't aggressive. If Sally were still here, I would ask her, Sally, they don't want me to come to meetings anymore. Well, nobody wanted to have a meeting with Jobs either because he was so demanding. He put people on the spot. He made everybody accountable. And the difference between this program and just about any, anybody else's program, and I don't know the particulars of all the other programs, is accountability, self-accountability you will have the ability, when you get all the stuff, to hold yourself accountable. Now, if you want to have some fun, as Sally would say, for those of you that have employees, you take the weekly report that you're going to get, and you have them fill it out weekly. I guarantee, and there's no guarantees in this, there's three guarantees in the seminar, half will quit the first month. 50% will quit the first month. 10 or 15% will quit the first week. Some will quit the first day. The first day. So if you've got employees you don't want, Corona aside, give them the report. I guarantee, if you were, let's say you had this many employees, some of the old timers would just get up and leave right in the fucking meeting. If you have tenured people, Tenured meaning that you can't fire them because, like in a teacher, a, a professor, they'll resign. Because they know that that's the first step for you getting rid of them. Now, high performance employees, if you had any, which you probably don't, will look at it as the opportunity to shine. But since most of us, I, I'm including myself in your group, most of us don't have high performance employees they'll look at it as a tool that you're using to get rid of them because they're insecure. 
What else about jobs? Yes, sir, in the back. They didn't, they didn't compromise. Didn't compromise. Now, most of you have lived your life through, by tacit approval, and I'm going to do a couple of little drills here. Uh, tacit approval is, okay, this side of the room, from this line, this side, they're in a meeting with me, okay? And this guy's leading the meeting, and he's talking, and you know he's talking shit, okay? Rarely will one of the, you guys say, you know, that's just horse shit. Everybody knows, okay? You don't do that, okay? But more importantly, I'm in the meeting, and I don't say anything. I don't shake my head this way or this way. And then the meeting uh, is broken up, and then you go off in twos, and you say, fuck, the old man agreed. Because I didn't disagree. I gave tacit approval. And God forbid I shake my head like this. I nod. And then, did you see that? Let's see how many times he agreed? Most meetings, and that's why most meetings are a waste of time, is because nobody's being held accountable, and because by your silence, you're, that you, you, you lived your whole life by, you've given them tacit approval. One of the reasons Jack Welch, God rest his soul, uh, who arguably, and in my opinion, was the greatest CEO in the last 100 years, uh, he said that you, he wanted full transparency. Even though he used to fire every fourth employee or every third employee, not dissimilar to myself, uh, he, he took uh, General Electric from a 400,000 employee company that was worth about $15 billion to a 120,000 employee. In other words, he fired 380,000 employees, 280,000 employees, and 500 billion is you, we don't allow, management does not allow transparency, honesty, from the employees because they're afraid of losing their job. Everybody in this room, myself included, has been in a position where if you, if you piss off the old man or the boss enough, you'll get fired. Well, I've lived my life pissing off people. You have bought, Mother's Day just passed, right? A lot of you, and I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't, but a lot of you called your mom, sent flowers, or now you can send shit on... Um, the internet, right? Right? Valentine's passed. You probably did some shit during Valentine's. Christmas, Hanukkah, all the, you bought flowers, candy, little gifts for people, right? I've never bought not a fucking piece of candy for anybody. I've never bought anybody a Christmas present. I've never had a Valentine's fucking card. Mother's Day card. Nothing. My whole entire life. How has your program worked out? Because you're pleasers. Now, I didn't even know what a pleaser was until about five or six years ago. I had a woman sitting in my office on the one-on-one -on -one time. Very attractive woman. And you can't even tell a woman she's attractive now let alone slap her on the ass. And now I'm not suggesting again. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just telling you how I've lived my life for 75 years. And she said, you know, my, my problem, Mr. Pena, is that I've been a pleaser all my life. Now, to me, when a woman, attractive woman, tells me she's a pleaser, even though my wife's office is about 20 feet from my office, is this bitch coming on to me? What the, you know, can I pull the drapes or what the fuck, you know, what the... She says, because I can't say no. And then she says, I can't say no. God damn. Uh, hey, sweetheart, I look for you all my life. She says, I can't say no. But that's not what she meant. She meant that people used her, not in a physical way, but I'm sure in a physical way, but we didn't get, get into that, those details. Used her. We all know people that are used by other people, like donkeys. And I've never suffered from that. I now call it suffering from that. I've never had that disease. Forget fucking corona. I've never had the pleasing. And then when you couple that with the fact that you want to be liked, or at the very worst, you don't want to be disliked. And women suffer from that mostly more than men. Because in my judgment, women have been raised the wrong way. You know, I'm no fucking... Well, I am an expert, really. But uh, the... Um, when you go off to school when you were three, four, five years old, the first time you went off to school, 
Now, my mother held my hand all the way to my grammar school in the hood. When I played American football in high school, my dad was at the locker room. You know how Friday, Friday nights, the, the, the game's over, and then you go out with your friends, right? My dad was there. I'm 17 years old, holding my hand and taking me home. Because he knew nothing good was going to come from a kid 17 years old drinking and, well, he didn't, he, he knew I would be drinking, but he didn't know I'd be whoring around. Um, but when I, when I went off to school, and when you went off to school, they tell you, be a good boy, do your homework, and you get a little pack at lunch probably, or you when you're sharing toys, you have to, uh, your next door neighbor, well, give Johnny some of your toys because he, he doesn't have any, right? Share. Fuck Johnny. If Johnny's mother can't buy him fucking toys, that's not your fucking challenge. If I had a word to, if you were leaving, to, and I normally have to make this speech on graduation day, one word that will change your life, be more selfish. Be more selfish. You can't be a good father, a good mate, a good anything, unless you have a good feeling about yourself. My current wife and my ex-wife, if they were here, they would tell you, we worship the ground Dan walks on. Or oh, my ex-wife, not anymore. In the old days, she worshiped the ground. Now she'd like to set me on fire. <laughs> like a lot of ex-wives, <clears throat> but our love for Dan is transitory compared to his love for himself. Nobody loves Dan Pena more than Dan Pena. Nobody loves Steve Jobs more than Steve. Nobody loves Warren Buffett more than Warren. Nobody loves Bill Gates more than Bill. Now, I see, I don't see, when I was growing up, and my mother used to tell me, you, you got to love yourself first, Danny. I didn't know what that meant. But I know from the time I could remember hearing, that's what my mother said. And my mother and grandmother came to the United States as illegal aliens across the border. They came across the Rio Grande River as illegal aliens. But there were certain things because, you know, and we're going to talk about programming yourself. We're going to talk, it's, it, the slides say kids aren't programmed for success, but either were you. You're a derivative of kids not being programmed for success. Okay, YouTube. 